Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel on engineering mathematics. In this video, I am going to discuss linear programming problems, canonical and standard forms. Let us first see what exactly we are going to see in this video. First, we see introduction to linear programming problem, which is also called as LPP. Next, we see general form of LPP. Then we see canonical form of LPP. Then we will see examples on canonical form. Next, we will see standard form of LPP. Then we will see examples on standard form. And finally, we will see exercise. Now, let us go ahead with this first point, introduction to linear programming problem. Linear programming is a mathematical technique used to determine the best possible outcome or solution to a problem within a given set of constraints. It is widely used in various fields such as economics, business, engineering and operations research to optimize processes, resources or profits. A linear programming problem involves the following key components. First, decision variables, objective functions, constraints and non-negative restrictions. Let us understand all of these components one by one. First, decision variables. These variables represent the quantities to be determined. Whereas objective function is a linear function that needs to be maximized or minimized. And constraints are the linear inequalities or equations that define the limitations or requirements of the problem. Finally, we see non-negativity restrictions. The decision variables are usually required to be non-negative as negative values may not make sense in real world contexts. Therefore, there are restrictions on decision variables called as non-negativity restrictions. Now, let us see general form of LPP. An LPP can be written in the following general form. Maximize or minimize function z is equal to c1x1 plus c2x2 up to cnxn subject to a11x1 plus a12x2 plus up to a1nxn less than or is equal to b1. There are these m inequalities whereas x1x2xn are all greater than or equal to 0. Let us understand the parts involved in this LPP. This first part is called as objective function. Second part is called as constraints. And this third part is called as non-negativity restrictions. Now let us see components involved in this LPP. Here Z is the objective function. X1, X2, Xn are decision variables. C1, C2, Cn are coefficients of the objective function. A, I, J are the coefficients of the constraints. You can see them over here. B, I's are the right hand side of the constraints. Now let us see different forms of linear programming problem. An LPP can be written in two different forms, namely canonical form and standard form. We will see them one by one. First, canonical form. Let us understand canonical form from its characteristics given below. The first characteristic is the objective function is expressed in the maximization form. That is, maximize z is equal to c1x1 plus c2x2 up to cnxn. But if it is of the type minimize z is equal to c1x1 plus c2x2 up to cnxn, then we multiply both the sides of this function by minus sign to convert it into maximization type. So after multiplying both the sides by minus sign, we get maximize say z dash is equal to minus z is equal to minus c1x1 minus c2x2 up to minus cnxn. Second characteristic is all constraints should be of the type less than or is equal to that is say a11x1 plus a12x2 up to a1nxn should be less than or is equal to b1. But if it is of the type greater than or equal to 
then we will multiply throughout by minus sign to convert it into less than or equal to type. That is minus a11x1 minus a12x2 up to minus a1nxn less than or is equal to minus b1. And if it is of the type equal to, then we write that equation as less than or is equal to b1 and greater than or is equal to b1. This inequality fits into this characteristic, but this inequality does not fit into this characteristic. So we convert this once again by multiplying throughout by minus sign to get minus a11x1 minus a12xn up to minus a1nxn less than or is equal to minus b1. Next characteristic says all the variables should be non-negative. That is these basic variables x1, x2, xn should be greater than or is equal to 0. If any variable is unrestricted, that is nothing is mentioned about it. For example, say x1 is greater than or is equal to 0 is given, but nothing is given about x2, then we write x2 as x2 dash minus x2 double dash, where x2 dash and x2 double dash are any two positive numbers. Now let us summarize these characteristics of canonical form. First, objective function is expressed in maximization form. Second, all constraints should be of the type less than or equal to. And third, all the variables should be non-negative. Now let us see examples on canonical form. Here is our first example. Here we are asked to convert the following LPP into canonical form. Look at the LPP. The objective function is already in the maximization form. So we don't have to do anything with this objective function. Now look at the constraints. Given that this objective function is subject to first inequality 2x1 plus x2 less than or is equal to 8 and second inequality x1 plus 3x2 greater than or is equal to 6. First constraint is of the type less than or equal to. But second constraint is of the type greater than or equal to. This constraint does not fit into characteristics of canonical form. So we have to convert this into less than or equal to type in our solution. And in third part, we are given that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. Since there are two decision variables involved in this problem, and both are given greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, this example satisfies non-negative restrictions. We do not have to do anything in this third part to convert this LPP into canonical form. Now look at the solution. Since this objective function is maximization form, I will keep it as it is. In constraints, I will write this first constraint as it is. I will convert this second constraint which is of the type greater than or equal to into less than or equal to type by multiplying throughout by minus sign and finally I'll write these non-negative restrictions as it is. This is canonical form of the given LPP. I hope you understood this. Now let us proceed with next one. Here is the second example. Here the objective function is of the type maximize z is equal to 4x1 plus 3x2. So there are two decision variables x1 and x2. Constraints given are 2x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 8, x1 plus 3x2 greater than or equal to 6. Whereas in non-negative restrictions, we have only x1 greater than or equal to 0. Look at the solution part. Since objective function is of the type maximization, we don't have to do anything to it. Look at the constraints. First constraint is of the type less than or equal to, so we will keep it as it is. Second constraint is of the type greater than or equal to. So we have to change it to less than or equal to type by multiplying throughout by minus sign. But wait, what happened here? In non-negative restrictions, we have only x1 greater than or equal to 0. x2 is missing. So first we write x2 as x2 dash minus x2 double dash. Where x2 dash and x2 double dash are both positive. So first we mention it in our solution. Then we write our objective function by replacing x2 with x2 dash minus x2 dash like this. Similarly, we will replace x2 everywhere in constraints as well. So this is our first constraint. Since second constraint is greater than or equal to type, we will convert it to less than or equal to type by multiplying throughout by minus sign. Simultaneously, we will replace x2 by x2 dash minus x2 double dash in this way. And in non-negative restrictions, we'll write now 
x1 comma x2 dash comma x2 double dash greater than or equal to 0. This gives us the canonical form of the given LPP. I hope guys you understood this part. Now we will see how to write given LPP into standard form. Let us understand standard form from its characteristics given below. The first characteristic of standard form is the objective function is expressed in maximization form. Just like in canonical form, if the given objective function is not in maximization form the way I wrote here, say it is of the type minimization, then we will multiply both the sides by minus sign to convert it into maximization type like this. Second characteristic says the RHS of each constraint should be non-negative. That is say look at this first constraint a11 x1 plus a12 x2 up to a1n xn less than or is equal to b1. This b1 should be non-negative. But if it is of the type this look at here this RHS is negative then we will convert it into positive by simply multiplying both the sides by minus sign. So this constraint now become minus a11 x1 minus a12 x2 up to minus a1n xn greater than or is equal to b1. Third characteristic says all constraints should be of the type equal to that is all constraints should be of the type equation. But if it is of the type less than or equal to then you can convert it into a equation by simply adding a slack variable into LHS in this way. Say that slack variable is S1. So this less than or equal to type inequality now becomes equation. And if the constraint is of the type greater than or equal to, then we will subtract the surplus variable from LHS to make it into equation type in this way. So here S1 is the surplus variable. We are subtracting it from this LHS to make this inequality into equation. I hope guys you understood this characteristic. The last characteristic says all the variables should be of the type non-negative that is x1, x2, xn greater than or equal to 0. But if any variable is unrestricted, that is nothing is mentioned about it. For example, x1 is greater than or equal to 0 is given and nothing is given about x2, then we write x2 as x2 dash minus x2 double dash, where x2 dash and x2 double dash are both positive numbers. This is just like as we have seen in canonical forms. Now let us summarize these characteristics. First characteristic says the objective function should be expressed in maximization form. The RHS of each constraint should be non-negative. All constraints should be equations. All the decision variables should be non-negative. Now let us see examples on standard form. Here is our first example. We are asked to convert the given LPP into standard form. The objective function of the LPP is minimize z is equal to 3x1 plus 5x2 whereas constraints are x1 plus 2x2 greater than or is equal to 4, 3x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 6 and non-negativity restrictions are x1, x2 greater than or equal to 0. Let us proceed for solution. First we tackle with this objective function. The characteristic of standard form says the objective function should be of the type maximization. So we convert it into type maximization by simply multiplying throughout by minus sign. So objective fun function now becomes maximize z dash which is equal to minus z is equal to minus 3x1 minus 5x2. Now we tackle with constraints. The characteristic of standard form says constraints should be equations. So if it is greater than or equal to type then we will subtract surplus variable from it and if it is less than or equal to type then we will add slack variable into LHS. So first constraint now become x1 plus 2x2 minus s1 is equal to 4. Second constraint will now become 3x1 plus x2 plus s2 is equal to 6. Now we add this slack variable s2 and surplus variable s1 into non-negativity restrictions to get x1, x2, s1, s2 greater than or equal to 0. This is standard form of the given LPP. I hope you understood. Let us proceed for next example. Once again, we have to convert the given LPP into standard form. 
here is the objective function z is equal to 3x1 plus 5x2 plus 7x3. We have to maximize it subject to these given constraints. First constraint is greater than or equal to type. Second one is less than or equal to type. Third one is also greater than or is equal to type. In non-negativity restrictions, all the three uh, decision variables are greater than or equal to zero. Let us proceed for solution. Since objective function is of the type maximize, we don't have to do anything to it. We will keep it as it is. Now coming on to constraints, I see RHS of first two uh, constraints is positive, but RHS of third constraint is negative. According to characteristic of standard form, we have to keep RHS of all constraints positive. So we will convert this RHS into positive by multiplying this inequality throughout by minus sign. So this third constraint then will become minus 3x2 plus x3 less than or is equal to 5. So our LPP now will turn into this. Now finally we convert these inequalities from constraint into equations by adding slack variables and subtracting surplus variable into respective inequalities. Coming on to first inequality, here we will subtract surplus variable S1 from LHS. So first inequality now become X1 plus 2X2 minus S1 is equal to 4. In second inequality, we will add slack variable in LHS to make it equation. So second inequality becomes 3x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 plus s2 is equal to 6. Similarly, in third inequality, we will add slack variable to make it equation. So it becomes minus 3x2 plus x3 plus s3 is equal to 5. Finally, we put s1, s2, s3 into these non-negativity restrictions to get x1, x2, x3, s1, s2, s3 greater than or equal to 0. This is standard form of the given LPP. I hope guys you understood this part. Now it is your turn to solve some examples. This is an exercise for you. Guys, please write me in comment box the solutions to this exercise. Please also write me whether you understood this entire session or not. In my next session, I will be discussing the basic solution to LPP. Till then, keep watching my videos. Keep solving these examples. Thank you all of you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.